All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the VFL Week 9 Recap. As we're over the halfway mark of the season, and I have admittedly missed a few recaps, we're going with an extra special video recap this week. Let's start things off with a look at the current projected playoff bracket. With just five weeks left in the season, the Marco variant appears to have a hold of first place, but they'll need to keep pushing to officially secure that week one or that first week by. As for the rest of the pack, it is still uh, anyone's game. Let's take a deeper look. With five weeks left in the season and just two wins separating second and 10th, it's gonna be a tight race to the finish. Will the toasters be able to keep a hold on that second place slot? Or will the newcomer slash points for Lear be able to take that take them over? We shall see. But with that, let's take a look at how the teams fared in week nine. For the most part, it was a low scoring week across the board with quite a few upsets. But hey, when the Jags beat the Bills, you know a week is heading for chaos. Most notably, the Gravy Seals and Team Z were able to walk away with wins this week, securing their second wins of the season. Could the tides be turning or will things right themselves next week? We'll see, but with that, let's get into our first game of the week. First up, we have the Dan vs. Steve showdown. It's no secret that these two owners have had a bitter rivalry throughout the years. From sand throwing to drinking games to the virtual gridiron, it's always, it's always a tough matchup between these two. For Dano, it was the prod prodigal son Carson Wentz and Nick Chubb that carried the team to victory with 30-point games apiece. As for the golden tickets, it was an interesting week with Godwin on a bye and A-Rob being non-existent. They were forced to start four running backs. However, with CMC returning and his snap count increasing and Godwin back in the mix, they'll be looking full steam ahead into a matchup against the Kyler Crazies in week 10. Note, in a post-game press conference, the Golden Tickets commented, sometimes you got to take it easy on the elderly in the league. Throw them a bone every once in a while, you know? We'll look forward to a rematch possibly in the playoffs. Next up, we have the expansion matchup. Longtime legal advisor and recently reinstated owner of the league, Anthony Patron, took down the newcomer Cousin Joe and the Carrie Underwoods this week. While both teams had nothing to write home about, uh, they're both sitting at five and four apiece with solid teams behind them. The Tony Tequilas are quietly sitting at number two in points four and will look to continue their impressive season. On the other side, on the other side of the ball, the Carrie Underwoods had a disappointing performance this week, but Cousin Joe will look to pull on the years of experience under his belt to get his team ready for a big matchup against the first place Marco variants. Next up, we have the Toasters versus the Kyler Crazies. Uh, it was an overall disappointing week for both teams, but it appears the Crazies will walk away with a win, which could play off big into the playoff race. Hmm, what's this? Oh, we have this week's Toilet Bowl of the Week. Note, the Toilet Bowl of the Week goes to the two low scoring teams. Uh, moving on, it was an interesting scare tactic from owner Matt Miller that pushed his team across the finish line. Listing his entire team on the trading block appeared to be the motivation they needed to pull off a late night comeback. However, it does make you question if Matt's tried this tactic before, maybe with some of the other teams he manages? Hmm, not sure. For on the other side of the ball, for the op optional toasters, this week could cause a bit of a concern as they now drop their second L in the last three weeks. They'll look to right their ship next week to keep, to keep a hold of that second place spot. Next up, we have the former, the two former podcast partners, the Gravy Seals and the Marco Variant. The Gravy Seals will take this one and secure their second win of the season. Currently in 11th place, that might not matter for them much this year, but as it appears, securing the championship last year has cost the Seals this season. But as of late, they've made quite a few moves to set them up for a very nice, or to set themselves up very nicely for next season. Are we trusting the process? We'll find out. On the other side of the field, we have almost the complete opposite. 
Last year's trade moves set the Marco variant up with more picks than we've ever seen in the VFFL. It appears to be paying off for them as they're currently the clear front runner to win the Fat Steven and hold a solid lead over the rest of the pack as far as making the playoffs are concerned. However, we have seen some questionable moves as of late, most notably starting an injured D hop this week. Will a lack of focus cost the variant? Probably not, but we will see. Dude, what's up? All right, next up, we have the Great Battle of Ohio, where the Chalupa Batman will walk away victorious. <clears throat> Some are asking if the pain in the neck was able to get in the virus's head with a whole host of interesting waiver moves leading up to the game. Ultimately, the virus was left with Tyrod Taylor at the helm, leading to a disappointing leak. week. They'll, <laughs> they'll look to write this one off and look on to next week with Brady, Brady back from his bye. As for the Batmans, they again appear to have a powerful team as we enter the later weeks of the season. Hitting big on Najee and Demo coming back from coming back from injury could be what it takes to secure a bid to the playoffs. But we'll see if Zach can hold it together, hold it together this year, and actually make it to the playoffs. Last but not least, we have the Landlords versus Team Z. In a surprising upset, Team Z will take down the Landlords this week, but it still might be getting close to closing time. They are currently sitting in 11th place and would need to win out and some help to secure a playoff spot. We'll see if they can build on this momentum moving into week 10. Uh, for the Landlords, they'll look to write this one off and look on to next week as they keep continuing their push towards the playoffs. Now, this week's Mr. Unlimited, Shithead himself, was the high scorer with 145 points. We'll try not, let, we'll try not to let that get too much to his head. And to wrap things up, here's a look at the lineup for week 10. With the trade deadline approaching, there's a lot on the line this week. We'll see who's buying and who's packing it up for the season come Monday night. 